Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the, my most recent totally cool plugin called the Widget Styles plugin. It will allow you to do something as simple as this, but uh, do something far more complex than this as well. Essentially, anything you want to do with a widget in terms of a widget style can be done using my widget styles plugin. So we're going to just start off by taking a look at it. Before we dive into that, we need to understand that there are conceptually three parts of a widget. And this plugin follows those three concepts. It's got the overall widget, which is the container for the widget itself. It's got a widget heading, which is the title of the widget when you type a title into the widget. So there's its heading. And if you're in the widgets, this right here is this title is its heading. And it has a widget body. And that is whatever text or whatever happens in there whether it's text or uh, lists or links or a video or whatever it is it's inside this widget body so you've got those three parts the overall widget the heading and the body and this plugin divides up the functionality that way so if we come over here to the widget for a second and come down to the my widget styles plugin the very first thing you do is select the number of styles that you want to use or that you want to create. Um, you can create, currently you can create up to 10 different styles. We may actually increase that, uh, but for ease of use right now, you can create up to 10 uh, widget styles. We'll just, we're going to actually, work, we'll create two widget styles. So once you've created the widget styles, then you have to scope the amount of change you want to make to the widget. So if we look at this, for example, this is the default widget, right? This is the way Thesis looks if you take uh, any kind of a widget, but in this case it's a text widget. Put a title in there, put some text in, that's what your widget looks like. So when you are scoping the amount of change here you are deciding what of this default styling you want to change so in, and that scoping is divided up into those three broad categories the overall widget the widget heading and the widget body now you can essentially style the same things for each of those three sections that is you can customize the background of that section using either background color, a background image, or a background gradient. You can customize the border of that element. You can configure a drop shadow for it. You can configure rounded corners for it. You can configure uh, padding inside of it. And you can configure margin outside of it. And, and you can do that for, for each of those sections. So before we talk about padding and margin, we're just going to style this overall widget first. And so we're going to customize the widget background and we're going to use a background color. And I think we'll go ahead and use a drop shadow and we'll use rounded corners. And then we're going to leave it at this for the moment. So you click the things you want to customize and then you hit save. Once you've done that, you'll be given the option of changing those then. Right before, there weren't any other options below this. But since we decided that we wanted to do the background color, the drop shadow, and the rounded corners of the overall widget area, the option boxes for those three things showed up. So now for our background color, we can pick a background color. I'm just going to say really light yellow here for a moment. And then for our drop shadow, we specify the width of that shadow, the blur of that shadow, and the color of that shadow. And for the moment, we'll talk about blur a little later, but for a moment I'm just going to say it's five pixels wide, it has five pixels of blur, and it's going to be a very light gray. And then in terms of rounded corners, 
uh, let's say that this will have a 10 pixel radius for each of those rounded corners. Now if we hit save, and we come over and we look at our widgets and refresh it, nothing happened. And the reason nothing happened is that you have uh, two things you have to do. One of them, of course, actually you have three things. One is to scope the amount of changes. Two is to set those changes. And then three is to decide to apply those changes to a specific widget. And so in this case then, here we are in our widgets. I need to refresh this because those styles don't exist currently. Okay. And so I am in widget block 2, widget column 1. You can remember it said column 1 heading, right? Column 1 heading, that's it. And if you expand the widget, my plugin creates this thing, this drop down saying select a style. Now, if it, unless it's set otherwise, it automatically takes the thesis default styling. So we're not going to take thesis default styling. We'll apply style 1 to this widget. We hit save. And we come back over and look at this again. Style 1 is now applied to this widget. And what we've done is we've made it a light yellow color. We've given it a 10 pixel radius and we've given it a drop shadow. So obviously though we don't want our text butted up against this and this is where we start talking about padding and margin.